In this tutorial, we will look at how you can use the laser feature of your CNC to add more detail to your projects in very interesting ways. This is a truly hybrid project that is easily created with your Aspire software and laser CNC setup. We will start with a partially created project file, review what has been done so far, do a bit of basic sculpting, creating a texture from a bitmap, and then add on a laser texture. In the end, you'll have a very unique project that will show off the power of your Aspire software with the laser module installed and a hybrid CNC setup. I've created a file to help us get started with this project. So let's go over to it, open the existing file. Let's navigate over to your version 11 tutorial files, picture-tigerface, and you'll find a file called tigerface.crv3d. So let's click that and open that up. Now let's take a look at our job setup so we know what we're dealing with here. We have a single-sided job. The width is 6 inches, the height is 6 inches, the thickness is 0.75 of an inch. We're going to be zeroing off our material surface. Our XY data will be set to the bottom left-hand corner. We're choosing to use a very high modeling resolution because there is already some pre-existing 3D content in this file and we'll be creating some new 3D content so we want as many pixels as we can have to give us some nice smooth shapes and sculpting ability. And with our material settings, we're just going to keep it at Canadian Maple. And then we're going to click OK. Let's have a look at our Layers tab. We already have four existing layers already set up for you. There's a zero plane layer, there's a bitmap layer, a layer number one, and tiger outlines. Now you can access all of these through your Layers tab here, or you can do it from your drop down at the very top of your screen here. Let's go back to our Modeling tab. Now let's review what I'd like to actually achieve with this file. Now when I was originally setting this up, I took this original bitmap, I traced some vectors around the parts that I wanted to give a little bit of relief to, and then I took the bitmap itself and I turned that into a texture. I added that to the actual tiger, then I put that all into a dish, and then ultimately, in the end, I took a laser tool path and etched onto that bas relief of the tiger in a dish some extra detail using the laser module. So let's have a look at our component tree here and our dish level. Let's go ahead and expand that. And let's turn that on. And flip over to our 3D view for a second. So on this level, we have two different components. We have a flat round circle, and that creates our dish. Now this is a piece of content that you get free with your Aspire software. So you just need to make sure you download and install your free 3D content, and it will be in there for you. So I just used it from there. And then I added a zero plane. Now this zero plane is very useful because what it's going to do is it's going to stop our tool from falling off the edge or potentially falling off the edge of this dish by giving us a shape for the tool to ride up on top of. We're going to be isolating all of our tooling to a circle, the exact same shape as this dish, but in some cases it will roll up just slightly higher and so we want to make sure that we keep that on the top surface of our material. The idea is that we're going to carve this dish with the tiger in it just below the surface of a piece of material. Let's go ahead now and minimize that and turn off that dish and go back to our 2D view for a second. Okay, now for our next step, let's have a look at one of our other layers that we have. We're going to turn on the layer called Tiger Outlines. Now you're going to see in our 2D view, we have a series of closed vectors and what I decided to do while I was tracing these over top of the bitmap was to isolate areas of the tiger's head that I felt needed to have some relief to them or had to, or, or wanted them to kind of be prouder than everything else. So what I've done is I drew some outlines around the ears and you'll see I included some of his head in there. That way when I create this very basic bubble shape, I can merge it into his head and it will look proper. I've got this nice line here that goes around the tiger's head. We've got this line here that follows around this part of his 
face. And this is actually going to be a shape that will be a negative dish, will be a subtract dish, which will take away some of this stuff. It'll kind of give the illusion of a cheekbone and also a place to put his eyes. Then we have this middle part of his face here that we're going to puff up. And then we're going to add to that a another dome shape for the top of his nose. Now these are going to create some very basic shapes, but with those basic shapes, with a little bit of sculpting, we're going to be able to produce a relief that once we add the texture from the bitmap on top of that, it will be quite convincing as a relief model. Okay. Okay, so now let's go back over to our component tree and have a look at this other level here called Tiger Sculpt. So let's expand that and let's just go ahead and flip over to our 3D view for a second and let's turn on all of those components. Now you'll see what I come up with using those closed vectors and some really basic shape creations using our shape creator up here. I came up with these bubble shapes. This bubble shape was it had a limited height. It's a very small bump to it, but it's not very complicated. It's very easy to do. If we tile our views, it'll be a little bit easier to see what's going on. So if I grab my face, this vector here created this face bump. And on top of that, I merged in the ears, which are there. And like I mentioned, so you can see by this grayscale bitmap representation that the shape was created with this whole vector. So some of this is protruding into his head like a proper ear would. And when you merge it in, it looks like it belongs. We have our face number two, which is a subtract component. Like I said, it's going to take away a little bit from that original face shape just in this isolated area to give us a look of maybe some cheekbones in there and then a place to put our eye. We have the next level up, which is called face three. And then we have our nose and then we have our eyes. Now, if we turn this up on its edge, I want to point out a couple other things to you. This um, nose shape here, I actually used a fade here. So if we look at the component properties for the nose, you'll see that in this area here where it says fade, there's an actual fade to 100%. So I faded this shape from this anchor point at the tip of his nose to this one that's at the top of his head, 100%. And that way I got most of my shape here, but then it faded in pretty much flat at the top of his nose. And so I can show you if I turn that off, you can see the original shape is here. And you'll notice there's a bit of a bump here at the end that would, would have been quite noticeable. With the fade, it actually blends it in quite nicely and you don't even see it up there. I also did the same with this shape here, but it was only faded to 50% from this bottom part of his nose all the way to the top of his head again. We faded that by 50%. And again, if I had left that without the fade, then it's quite bumpy there. He would have quite a forehead, but by fading it, I reduced that down and it looks a little bit more natural. So there we have it. And again, those are all created just using the very, very basic shape editing tools that we have our shape creation tools. Now for our next step, we're going to create a texture from the original bitmap that I brought in. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and hide all of this level. And we're going to minimize that so that we have a nice tight component tree. Let's go up to our layers drop down here and we're going to hide our tiger outlines. We don't need those anymore. And then we will discuss or I'll tell you a little bit about where these other layers have come from. The zero plane layer was created when I created the zero plane for the dish shape level over there. And then the bitmap layer was created when I brought in the bitmap originally. Layer one is the default layer that you get when you set up any job. And then of course, tiger outlines is where I put all of those outlines to create the components to build up that relief of the tiger's face. And that's also where the components live is on this layer. So for now, we're going to keep the bitmap layer as our active layer. And we're just going to choose that bitmap. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a texture from this bitmap. Before we do that, we should create a new level for it to go on. So over here, we're going to right click on either one of these levels. And we're going to go down to insert a new level and we'll select that new level that was created and right click on that 
and we'll rename that. We're going to call this tiger texture. We'll off click that and that's our active level. So now anything that we create will go on that right away or any components that we create will be placed on that level. With our bitmap selected, we're now going to go ahead and create a component from selected or imported bitmap. And as soon as we do that, the software is going to take a look at this bitmap and create a relief of it. And as you see, the relief is kind of interesting. What the software has done is it looked, it's looked at this picture. It's taken the light colors and given them higher pixel heights and the dark colors have gotten lower pixel heights. And then as it's gone through the scale of colors from light to dark, it's gone from high to low. And what you end up with is this really interesting looking relief texture. So we'll look straight down on that. Another thing this has done for us is it's given us some whiskers and some other elements that we didn't model in, like these, the stripes, the colors, the differentiation and the colors here. We now have that in our texture. Also some of this background foliage we didn't have either. We didn't model that in. So that'll all add interest to our finished relief when we're all done. Now that we have that, we're going to go up here and we are going to look at our layer manager again. Now this component has landed on our bitmap layer and we don't want it on there because as you can see, it shares the same layer as our bitmap. So let's just go ahead and off click everything. And we are going to select the tiger head, right click on the grayscale bitmap representation of that component. And we're going to move this to its new layer and we're going to call this tiger 3D texture. And we're going to go okay. And then we can go back up here again and we'll see that we now have a new layer set up and we turn off the bitmap layer and make sure this is the selected layer. We can off click that. And there we have it. So we can't see our original bitmap anymore. We just have this grayscale bitmap representation of this 3D component over here. So with that selected, let's go ahead and run a quick smoothing pass over that. That way we can smooth off some of these high sharp edges. And by default, it's set to max, but let's go ahead and turn this down to somewhere around here. This is very subjective, right? You want to mute the detail a bit just so you get rid of some of those high sharp pixels, but you want to retain enough so that you can get some of those interesting details like the coloration around his eyes and his whiskers, of course. Now, again, this isn't a true, true bow relief because we have these strange little recesses here where there's dark areas amongst light areas. So it all depends on the lighting of the original image, how this is going to turn out, but this looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that smoothing. So let's just go ahead and click OK. Now to see what this is going to look like, let's go ahead and turn back on our tiger sculpt and we'll see what we have. And you see that we added our tiger to the middle of that. If we turn it up on its edge, you'll see that we've added in some relief. Let's turn that off and turn that back on again. We have a nice little puff there. And that looks really, really good in the end. Let's look straight down on that again. Now, the next thing we need to do is to try this inside of our dish and make sure that it all fits in there. So let's turn back on our dish here and we'll see what we have. And you'll see that, let's maximize our 3D view for a second. Now, it does fit inside the dish, obviously, but part of his nose is sticking up above the modeling plane. And that's this gray or this hazy area here that you can see. So obviously our tiger relief is thicker than our dish is deep. So we have two options. We can make our dish a little deeper or we can go ahead and scale down the shape of our tiger relief plus the texture that's on there. And I think we'll do the second one. So first of all, we need to figure out how deep our dish is. So let's maximize this level here and let's select our flat round circle. And let's take a look at our component properties for that. And you'll see that it's actually a 0.26 deep. So we need to make sure that our relief of our tiger head and the texture together aren't any thicker than that. And actually a little bit thinner would be nice. So let's close this down. Let's go ahead and turn off the dish again, minimize that tree. And then we're going to go ahead and use this option right here, which is scale Z height of model. So this will scale the Z height of anything that we see in our 3D view. So our whole composite model, if we can see it in our 3D view, it will be scaled. So we're going to scale to an exact height. And you'll notice here that right now it's at 0.2904. So let's scale this down to be like 
0.255 and then we'll click apply and then we'll close this down and we'll click OK here and turn back on our dish again and you'll see that now the nose is not sticking outside of our dish and it looks pretty good in the end. That looks great. So let's go back and let's hide our dish level here and let's talk a little bit about what's going on in our current 3D view. You can see the edge of our relief that we created and it's causing some strange sort of um, transitions between parts of the tiger. You can see that we um, where the ears intersect with the head, there's a little bit of a crease there. Uh, some of the space around here should be rounded over a bit more. So I think a little bit of sculpting might help out. So again, let's look straight down on this again. Let's hide our tiger texture. Let's make our tiger sculpt level active. And let's maximize that. So what we're going to do in order to sculpt this, we need to make this all one component. So to do that, we can use our create component from visible model. So anything that's in our composite model or anything we can see in the 3D view will be converted into a new component as soon as we click this button. In this case, it's going to land right on our tiger sculpt level. So we'll click that and you'll see we now have a new component here. And if we turn this up on its edge, you'll see that our tiger head is double the thickness it was before. That's because this is being added on to the result of all these. So let's just right click on this and choose show only this. And you'll see that it squishes back down to the thickness it should be. Let's look straight down on top of this again. And now let's go in and do a little bit of sculpting on that. So the two tools we're going to use here are going to be smooth and smudge potentially. So first of all, we're going to choose smooth and we're just going to increase the diameter of our tool a bit. Our strength is fine where it is and our smoothness is fine. And then we're just going to test that out over here and see what we get. And you'll see quickly, you'll see that we can get rid of that line that's there quite quickly without any problems. Let's turn down the strength a little bit, maybe pump this up a little. I'm just going to round over some of this here where it looks a little hard. The cheekbone there, we can kind of smooth out a little bit. That'll help to remove some of those creases. Looks really good. I'm happy with that. That's great. And now we're going to think about is there's still quite a little crease here in this ear. So we're going to choose raise only here. And what that will do is instead of it finding an average between the two pixels next to each other, it's actually only going to raise up pixels to meet the next ones, the ones next to it. And you'll see what happens as I kind of move over that, rub back and forth, that those pixels get pulled up and give us a much nicer looking transition than what we had a second ago. And that looks pretty good there. And that's pretty much all we're going to do. It doesn't require all that much in the end, just enough to kind of soften some of those hard edges that we had originally. And that's great. So let's keep that and click OK. Now to see what we have here, let's turn back on our tiger texture and have a look at that. And that looks much better already. You can see that that transition looks much cleaner there now between those ears. That looks great. This all looks nice around here, the front of his, his nose here, his jowls. And I don't mind this being a little bit harder here because that is the separation between his neck and his head. So that looks all right. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's look straight down on that again. Let's turn back on our dish. We can minimize our tiger sculpt for a second, just so everything is nice and neat and tidy. Now, the next thing we need to deal with is how to get rid of the relief that's outside of the actual dish to clean this up a little bit. Okay, now to get rid of this or to hide this uh, detail here that we see, to, again, to clean up this edge a little bit, to make it look a little nicer. Uh, well, we're not actually going to machine this area, so this step may or may not be necessary. Um, if you didn't do it, then you may have some interesting stuff happening along the edge of your dish when you actually go to cut this. So it is a good practice to try and get rid of this detail. Now, there are different ways you can do this. Um, you can crop your bitmap. You can set up a clipping level. You can do all kinds of stuff. Um, but for us, what we're going to do is we're going to use a multiply level with a copy of our dish and our zero plane on it. So to do that, we're going to go over to our component tree and we're going to turn off our dish. 
we're going to turn off our tiger sculpt we're going to turn off our tiger texture and then we're going to minimize that just to make it nice and tidy we're going to right click on tiger texture and we're going to insert in a new level and we're going to call this new level so we'll need to rename it and multi multi level then we're going to open up our dish here and we are going to select both of these components by holding down our shift key and then we're going to let go of our shift key and we're going to hold down our control key and we're going to drag these up into that level and you'll see that it's going to make a copy of that having the control key held down will make a copy into this um, level and then because the level is turned on we're going to be looking at those two components straight away let's go ahead and shrink up this a little bit and then we'll go back and have a look at this now, before we move along, just to make things a little bit tidier, let's just go ahead and delete out this um, the one at the end of both of these names. This just tells us that it's a copy of something else in here, and that's done by default by the software. But just to clean it up, I'll get rid of those. Um, so just by luck, this flat round circle is actually a positive component that we've actually subtracted. So if we go ahead and change the combine mode to add, you'll see what happens. Now we have a flat round the circle that's proud of our zero plane now in order to use the multiply feature of our software in the way that we want to use it for this job is we need to scale this dish to be equal to one so if you're doing this in this job it means it's going to be equal to one inch if it happens to be in a millimeter job then it's going to be one millimeter so you kind of need to keep that in mind it's more or less just one unit so but in this case we're going to go one millimeter sorry one inch so we're going to click on our component properties and we're going to change the shape height to one and press the space bar to accept that and then we'll close this down now let's have a look in our 3D view. Now, if you're not familiar with how the multiply combine mode works, then I'll give you just a kind of a brief overview right here. So what the software is going to do, as soon as we turn this into a multiply level, it's going to take whatever's on that level and the corresponding heights of the pixels and multiply them by any pixels that fall below it in the composite model. Okay, so as soon as we start turning on all of these different uh, levels here, then the math will start to happen. So any pixels that lie underneath here, because this is at zero, will be multiplied by zero. So that will give us a result of nothing. Anything up here, so anything that lies underneath the flat top of this shape, which happens to be one, because we just scaled that up to be one, it will leave any of the pixels below that in our composite model as one now our composite model that that's made up from any levels below this now if i added a level on top of this it wouldn't affect what was on top it's just everything below it okay so it multiply it by one back to what i was saying and that will leave things the way they are now everything in between will be multiplied by the height of the pixel the corresponding pixel so it'll give us this nice sort of transition now also because we use the original dish that we had down here then we're going to get everything lining up so that our relief of our texture and tiger that fall within the edge of our circle and the flat bottom of it will have a nice smooth transition from nothing to the full one height that it is so it'll look quite nice when we're all done in the end so to see how this is going to work we're going to turn on our tiger texture and we're going to turn on our tiger sculpt Okay, we're not going to worry about our dish right now. And let's go ahead now and flip this over, this whole level over to the combined mode of multiply. And notice what happens in our 3D view. Everything outside of that circle, outside of that dish, is multiplied by zero, and you'll see that it's gone away. And then anything in the top of the dish was left exactly the same height. And then everything else along the the tapered edge of the dish ends up being scaled down along the edge to nothing. So now when we go ahead and turn back on our dish, we get a really good effect here. You can see what happens. That's the end result. And that's all because of the multiply level that we put in here. It's taking care of all of that for us. So let's just go ahead and minimize that a bit. And now we're going to start to think about creating some tooling for this and the process that we're going to do this just so that you get a good sense of what the laser module will add to your 
3D tooling. As we're going to step through the 3D tooling, we'll preview all those tool paths, give you a sense of what that's going to look like, and then we're going to go back in and we'll add in the lasering on top of that. So then we'll get a really interesting effect in the end. And there's a couple of things we need to do to our file before we do that. So let's go ahead and jump right into creating some tooling, some standard 3D tooling for this. Okay, for a second, before we go into our tooling, we should have a think about what this is going to be used for in the end. So in our pretend world, we're going to cut this into the top of a wooden box. We already have the top already cut. And uh, really all we want to do is just cut this circle or what's inside of the circle into the top of this lid in the center. We don't want our tool to go outside the circle. We don't want it to touch any of this material out here in case the surface isn't completely flat. We don't want to scratch it or mar it with our tool. So to do that, we're going to need to create a vector boundary around that original dish component so we can isolate our tooling to that. So there's a couple of different ways we can do that. We could choose the component out of our component tree and then create a component from, or create an outline from that component. Or what we can do is we can simply right click in our 3D view and find our component inside this list and we can choose it. Now, a couple things will happen. You'll notice that we have flat round circle in here twice. That's because we copied it and I deleted that. Um, bracket one bracket at the end. So one of these is the correct one. So as soon as I click it, you'll see what happens. My component tree expands and shows me the one that I've selected. And that is the one that I want. So that's perfect. So now if I go ahead and tile my views, I can go ahead and choose to create a vector boundary from selected component. And there is that perfectly round circle. Now I chose to do it this way because you can see in my 2D view that the zero plane that's up on the multi-level is the bitmap representation of that is blocking all of my other bitmaps. I could have resorted those if I wanted to, but it was just easier just to go in and select that through my right click menu in my 3D view. Now, if by chance you right click and you already have a component selected, you'll see that you don't have that little list of components that's underneath your pointer. So you need to actually have nothing selected and then right click and you'll get that list of components. Okay, so for now, let's go ahead and bring up our tool paths tab, pin that down, and then we're going to retile our views so that we can see both clearly. Now we're going to create the very basic 3D tooling that you're going to need to run on something like this. It's going to include a roughing pass and a finishing pass. But first of all, we should set our material to make sure everything here is correct to what's on our machine. So the thickness is three quarters of an inch. Our data will be set to the lower left-hand corner. We're gonna zero off our material surface. And because we're cutting this into the surface of something, we wanna make sure it's pushed all the way to the top and our gap is below. And our rapid Z gaps and our home start position are set up so they're safe and appropriate for our CNC, but you're gonna to have to make sure that they are set up safe and appropriate for your CNC. And then we can click okay. Now we're gonna go in and create a 3D roughing pass. We're going to use a quarter inch end mill. That's perfectly fine. We're going to use a selected vector. That's the vector that we created. So we're going to go ahead and select that. So now we have our sec a selected vector. We're not going to cut outside of that because if we did, like I had mentioned before, we're right up on the edge of this dish. And if we go outside of that, we end we could end up marring the wood and we don't want that to happen. So we're going to keep this constrained inside this dish. We're going to leave a little bit of a machining allowance behind. We're going to do a Z level roughing, no raster angle, no ramp and plunge moves. And we're just going to go ahead and get rid of that one. And then we can calculate this. And as always, we'll preview our visible tool paths and make sure that it looks okay. That's sort of what I expected. So that looks great. And now let's go and create our finishing pass. To do that, we're going to use a 1 8 inch ball nose end mill. It's perfect. We're going to use the same selected vector that we did before, and we're going to use a boundary offset of zero, like before. We're going to go up to the edge of that. We're not going to roll off the top. We're going to use an offset tooling. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use a very slight step over retract. So as we move around and around and around, as the tool moves to the next circle in its tool path, it's going to lift up, go over and plunge back down again, just a slight amount. And that way will lessen the chance of us having those radial lines that sometimes you see while the tool is moving out and dwelling in that area. So that'll help to 
alleviate some of that. And we'll call this 3D finishing. And we can calculate that. Let's preview our visible toolpath. And that's, that's exactly what I expected to have happen. That looks really good. I'm happy with that. Let's just maximize the view. Now, if you've cut anything like this before, one of the disadvantages of this is that you can't differentiate in things like shadows or changes in texture with regards to color or even uh, with this particular real live animal, some of the features, if you were to model them in so that they would show up once you get done carving it, we would be difficult and would take quite a skilled modeler. That's the beauty of being able to use the laser module is that with your laser tool on your CNC machine, you can go ahead and add in that detail by simply running one extra tool path. And the setup for that is really easy. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what that's going to look like. So let's close this down. Let's look straight down on our model. And now let's go ahead and flip over to our 2D view for a moment. And we're going to turn off all of these. So we're back to nothing and we'll just deselect that. We're going to go up here to our layer manager and we're going to turn off our tiger texture and we're going to turn on our tiger outlines and we'll select that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these outlines to crop the bitmap down to the shape of the tiger and then use that bitmap with the resulting bitmap for my laser tool path. So to do that, I'm going to select the vectors that make up the perimeter of my tiger. So that one and hold down my shift key in the ear and this guy here and that one there. Then I'm going to right click and I'm going to say copy to a new layer. Okay. And we're going to call this laser and then we'll click. Okay. We're going to go up here to our layer manager again, drop this down. We're going to turn off this one, make sure this one is selected. And then we can go ahead and off click that. Now we're going to take all of these. And we're going to go over to our drawing tab and we're going to weld them together. So now we have the perimeter of our tiger where we'd like the laser to start. Stop. Now, the one thing that we're missing here is the circle. We don't want a laser outside of this. So we need to now go and find that circle. So let's drop this down. And that one ended up popping onto the tiger 3D texture. So let's select that again. Right click on that circle. We're going to copy that to layer laser. We'll go ahead and turn that one off. Make sure this has been selected. So it's our active layer. And then we're back again. Now what we want to do is hold down our shift key and select both of these. And we want to choose to only keep the overlapping vector. So what's inside of the circle we're going to keep. And now that's exactly the area that we would like to go ahead and laser. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go up here and we're going to turn off our laser and we're going to go back to our bitmap for a moment and we're going to select that. Okay. Then we're going to copy this bitmap. Once it's selected, we're going to copy it to a new layer and we're just going to call this. We're just going to copy it to the laser layer. That's fine. Let's go ahead now and drop this down, turn this one off, go back to my laser. Off click that. Now you can see there's that vector boundary that we had. It's the black one right there. If we hold that down and hold down our shift key and select that bitmap. What well, we want to make sure that we choose the right layer up here. You'll see that it was red a second ago. That means I had the wrong one selected. We want to make sure we're on this current one here. And we can go ahead now and oh, I'll need to reselect those again. We can go ahead now and crop our bitmap. Select that. And you'll see what's happened now. Our bitmap has been cropped to that vector boundary that we have, and that's perfect. Now we can select our tiger. We can go over to our tool paths tab and we can choose to use that in the laser picture module. So let's click that and let's tile our views again so we can see what's going to happen. Let's click on our 3D view. Let's turn back on everything in our modeling tab. So everything is back. And that looks good. So now we're going to go ahead and work our way from top to bottom through our 
laser picture form. Now there is a much better video that goes through all the different setups here and I'll link to that in the related videos. So if you want to go in depth into this part of your laser module, I suggest that you watch the related videos, okay? So we're going to use this laser. This is our 3.8 watt and it's set up for our photo. Maximum power is 50. Our move speed will be 20. We're going to go ahead and use a hatch and we're going to dither that. And that's the perfect density for this, okay? We need to project this onto our 3D model. Okay, that's important. It needs to follow the contours of our model. The software will vary the power of the laser as it moves across the 3D contours of your model. And we're gonna, just gonna rename that. And we're not gonna send it directly to our machine. And we're gonna go ahead and calculate that to maximize our view. Let's go ahead and preview that visible toolpath. And you'll see what happens now. We get all of that nice texture in here, the color differentiation and so on. And that looks really neat in the end. And it follows right along the surface of our model and looks really good. And that really illustrates the power that you have to use your laser module to add some really interesting details. You can imagine if this was a portrait of somebody where you created some very basic shapes, maybe you're not a sculptor. So just creating a basic puff shape of somebody's head and then lasering on a photo on top of that, that would look pretty amazing in the end. Now, if you're looking at saving off the tool paths from this file, I suggest you have a look at our saving tool paths guide. And I'll link to that below in our related video section. Now what we're going to do is we'll save this off so you can have a look at this at your leisure. So we'll go up to file, go down to save as, we'll choose tigerface.crv 3D file. But we're going to just amend the name with tooling and we'll save that off. We hope this video helps to illustrate the power of our laser module and a hybrid CNC.